This video will walk you through how to calculate the Quality Service Indicator, or QSI, for a fictitious FedEx competitor. We will begin with a summary of the data for this problem. Each day, a FedEx competitor processes approximately 70,000 shipments. Suppose they use the same service quality index as FedEx, which is identified in the text in the Measuring Service Performance box for FedEx, and that they identify the following number of errors during a five-day week. Service upsets have been organized into 10 categories ranging from complaints reopened to lost packages to wrong day late. The number of service upsets per category ranges from a low of 2 for lost packages to a high of 751 for right day late. There are two basic requirements for this problem. The first is to compute the service quality indicator by finding the weighted average sum of errors as a percentage of total shipments. And then we're asked to consider how the QSI might be used in other organizations such as a hotel or automobile service facility. Let's begin with computing the QSI manually. First, we need to obtain our factors and relative weights. In this problem, we're directed to the FedEx example provided in the chapter, which identifies the number of errors during a five-day work week. Specifically, we want the type of error and the predetermined weights. Next, from the data we want to extract the number of shipments per day, which in this case is 70,000, and the total number of shipments over the five-day period, which is estimated to be 350,000. That's 70,000 per day times five days. Next, we want to prepare a table to help us with our calculations. First, we list the various service upset categories and then the predetermined importance weight and then sum them. For this example, the weights are on a 10-point scale, ranging from 1 being low to 10 being of high importance, and the sum of the weights is 38. These numbers are predetermined and come from the FedEx example in the text. Now once we have the weights, we want to determine the percentage of the total weight for each upset factor. So for complaints reopened, the relative weight of 3 is divided by 38 to get 0 0.079 or 7.9%. For damaged packages, we take 10 divided by 38 to get 0.263 or 26.3%. We now do this for every factor and then simply sum the percentages to make sure that they add up to 1.0 or 100%. Next, we extract the number of errors or service upsets from the data. Then we add up all the service upsets or errors and see that over the five-day period there were a total of 1,645 service errors across the 10 categories. Finally, we want to determine the weighted average number of errors. We do this by taking the percentage weight of each factor and multiplying by the number of errors. So for example, if the percentage weight for complaints reopened is 0 0.079 or 7.9%, we then multiply by 125 to get a weighted average number of complaints reopened to be 9.87. For damage packages, we take 26.3% times 18 errors to get a weighted average of 4.74 damage packages. We then do this for all the categories and then sum up the weighted values to come up with a total weighted average of 73.24 service errors. Now that the heavy lifting is done, we can proceed to calculate the QSI. First we determine the weighted average percentage of the total shipments. To do this, we just take the 73.24 weighted average number of errors observed over the five-day week and divide by the 350,000 total number of shipments over the same period. 73.24 divided by 350,000 equals 0 0.00020948, which is quite small. It helps to convert this to a percentage, so if we multiply that by 100, this gives us 0 0.0. 0.209%. This represents the average service upset rate. Finally, to calculate the QSI, we simply subtract that number from 100% and we get 99.979%. So now we can come up with an overall conclusion. What this tells us is that over the five-day period, the delivery performance is almost perfect on a percentage basis, but still 1,645 customers experience some type of service upset. Now you may think that 1,645 customers experiencing upset is big, but in relation to the high volume of shipments, it's very, very low. Still, the example shows that there is room for service improvement, and the first place to look is probably at right day late. The second requirement was to consider how the QSI might be used in other organizations such as a hotel or automobile service facility. 
QSI can be used to measure performance in a hotel based on possible service upset factors that are important to customers such as greeting, room condition, food quality, amenities, or concierge service. For an auto repair facility, QSI can be used to measure performance on important factors such as greeting, diagnostic accuracy, repair time, or rework. As you've probably observed, the Quality Service Indicator or Index is a relatively simple but valuable tool that can be used to measure service quality on common points of service failure or upset for virtually any type of service ranging from airlines to zoos. The index can then be compared to a predetermined performance standard and used to identify areas for service improvement.